Motorsport is expensive. And we all know, in order to even get into karting properly, you need to be well off. But even at higher levels, wealth isn't distributed equally. And motorsport can often be a gathering of some spoiled and filthy rich people who think they're above the rules. Arjun Mani, however, was not one of those people. He was born into a family of racers in Bangalore, India. His father, Gwatam, had raced in the Formula India single-seater series. And at age five, Arjun received his first ever go-kart. And by age eight, he was out there winning championships. In fact, he even became the youngest Indian to win a kart race abroad. And to think when I was eight, the only karting I'd ever won was Mario Kart Wii. So the talent and motivation was certainly there for young Arjun. Mane, once old enough, would move up from karts through the junior series, racing in BRDC Formula 4, a British F4 series, where he would finish second to George Russell by just three points. That impressive performance led him to Formula 3 and GP3, where although he never really got a consistent opportunity at the front, he would score a win in GP3 at Barcelona and would actually finish in the championship ninth overall. Therefore, these performances were enough to score him a drive in Formula 2 for 2018, where he would sign on with the Trident Racing Team. Now, across the pond, originating from Connecticut, USA, was a completely different man by the name of Santino Ferrucci. Although little is known about his parents, it's believed Ferrucci at a very young age was somehow able to amass a large real estate network. And as with anyone in motorsport, his career was likely funded from someone very well off. Unless as a 10 year old, Ferrucci was smart enough to invest in housing during one of the largest stock market crashes of a generation. Unlikely. His karting career would also start out from an early age. And after enough experience, he would move on from karting into the S SBF 2000 Winter Series, where he scored three wins, and that was good enough for him to qualify for some Formula 3 drives in 2014. His best results came in British Formula 3, where he picked up two wins. Again, in 2014, a young Dan No Skill should have stopped pissing about in Minecraft and used a property portfolio to fund Formula 3. Oh. Long story short, Ferrucci also found his way into Formula 2 in 2017, again with the Trident Racing Team, and would stay on with them for 2018 to partner Mane. And this is where we properly pick up the story, because as the season went on, Trident, Mane, and Ferrucci would have a far from easy time, with one of the drivers only lasting 13 out of 23 races. This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access VPN. Browsing the internet without a VPN is like like driving a car without a seatbelt. All it takes is one accident to really hurt you. A virtual private network, or VPN, is an app that hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. This way, it shields your digital life from the eyes of those who are looking to exploit your private information. Whenever you connect to the internet on a public Wi-Fi network, at airports, coffee shops, friends' houses, or even your own home, your data is at risk of being stolen. Hackers that are connected to the same Wi-Fi network have the ability to steal your personal data with ease, including sensitive information such as passwords, keystrokes, and even your photos. Private Internet Access helps you protect your personal data by encrypting your internet connection through their world-class server infrastructure, which makes your information shielded and bulletproof. And watching Netflix without private internet access is like driving a race car at 10 miles an hour. Sure, you're in the car, but you're not able to benefit from the full exhilarating experience. Many websites and apps have region blocked content. Streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney Plus have different library options based on where you're located. And some shows cannot be accessed if you're not located in a certain place. Sports events, including F1 TV, have regional blackouts and are only available within certain regions. Private internet access helps you overcome these restrictions by giving you the option to change your IP address to one of their 91 countries and choose from all 50 US states, allowing you to gain access to websites and services that are only available in those locations. They also have a brand new feature that allows you to protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time. And their no logs policy, which has been proved multiple times in in court means they'll never
never record or store your data. By using my link, you can grab an 83% discount on private internet access. That's just $2.03 a month. And they'll also give you an extra four months completely free. Just go to paivpn.com slash danoskill or check the link in the description. Thanks to private internet access for sponsoring this video. The first few rounds of the season would go fine for the drivers. They weren't near the front by any means, but did both manage to pick up points in Baku with Mane finishing fifth and Ferrucci finishing sixth. But the first real controversy would start in France, where after voicing concerns to the team about the power of the car, Mane was not listened to. And we got the radio message I'm sure many of you have heard. I swear, you guys don't support me at all. I do everything, every podcast, every session. You can't do this to me, mate. I have no power out of the car. Why does anybody believe me? I don't really do the championship anymore. To rub salt in the wound, the commentators would even chuckle at Arjun's expense. But in their defense, it is pretty bizarre to hear a driver get so emotional during a race. The reason behind this message was Mane feeling the car had very little power. Now, there are rumors Ferrucci had paid off the team to give Mane a worse engine. This has obviously never been confirmed, and it would be very difficult to do so. But you can draw your own conclusions from the rest of the video. The team and the FIA did investigate this lack of engine power as Formula 2 is meant to be a series where all machinery is Hi. equal with the only difference being in car setup and drivers. They found Mane's engine was actually not running correctly and he was therefore given a new one. If the story ended there however well that would just be too happy of an ending for motorsport as this is where Ferrucci comes into play. As you're about to hear the guy was a straight up knob. At the Silverstone race Ferrucci would intentionally crash into Mane in this incident, clearly taking an issue with his teammate consistently beating him up until this point. By the way, that's a huge sign you might just be a bad driver. For this, the FIA would issue Ferrucci with a well-deserved two-race ban. He was also disqualified for that Silverstone sprint race for forcing Arjun off the track in a separate incident, so he was a completely dirty driver with a disregard for the rules. It's also proved by a completely separate incident where Santino Ferrucci was found to be driving his Formula 2 car between the F2 and the F1 paddock with one glove on while using his his phone. All he needed was an ice-cold brewski to complete the distracted driver's dream. For the phone incident, Ferrucci was fined an astronomical $6,000. Yes, a hefty sum for me and you, but pocket money for a man potentially worth millions. Even worse than the misconduct on track, however, was Ferrucci's apparent racism. And unfortunately, I don't mean taking part in races. Aside from the FIA having to step in and prevent Santino from running a Donald Trump Make America Great Again Again, livery, as it completely violated F2's no political statements rule, there were also reports of Santino and his father mocking Arjun and his accent. And this is where Trident finally stepped in. After the two race bans, Santino would not return to Formula 2. He was dropped for good and Trident firmly stood on the side of Arjun, issuing a huge apology to not just him, but his family as well. In my opinion, that's too little too late. It seems clear that this bullying was a allowed to continue under the watch of Trident, likely in the pursuit of money. And action was only taken against it when the FIA and media caught light of the situation. Of course, money talks, and it's only when Trident's bottom line comes under threat they would actually ever do something about the situation. Unfortunately, this is the cold, hard reality of the world we live in. Making things even worse, Santino is still racing at a high level. He's currently in IndyCar and has been since his F2 departure. He would actually score his first ever podium in the series last season. But I am one in support of second chances, and it does seem he's caused very little controversy since leaving Formula 2 and racing in IndyCar. I do really hope, though, he's apologized to Arjun after what happened. Speaking of Mane, he did continue racing too. And after another six races in F2 in 2019 with Campos Racing, Arjun decided to leave open wheelers and begin pursuing GT and endurance racing. He's set to be driving for the Mercedes AMG team HRT in DTM next year, where hopefully he can see some success. But if things don't go his way, keep your ears open for some radio messages as emotional as a scene in Breaking Bad. Well if you subscribe to this channel, hopefully we will continue to see some success too. And I again thank you for all the support. Goodbye!